guys, Rhonda Draculas here, RK3 Designs, and it's my birthday! So, I'm going to create with my very favorite colors, turquoise. So stay tuned and see what we can come up with. All right, guys, so anyone that knows me knows how much I love turquoise. So today I am playing with two of my favorite colors. They are from um, Color Passion. I get them from Erica and Jeff with Artist Till Death. Check out their website. I'll put a link in below for you guys. And the colors we're using today are Spearmint and Mint. Gorgeous, gorgeous colors. And then we're gonna add a little bit of white with the Alumalite White Opaque Dye. So before we get started, I've prepped my board with just a white background. And I do this so that I don't have to keep an array of colors in the back to do all my sample boards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fog my edges because I know that the main color in this piece is gonna be turquoise. So as my epoxy starts to roll over the edges, I'm gonna have that turquoise show through instead of the white that's on my board. So I'm gonna take just some regular uh, Ultra Cover paint and primer from Rust-Oleum and this is Seaside and it's in gloss. All right, so when I fog my edges, I do them very softly. I don't wanna do a hard edge because then that will transfer uh, up through my, my uh, piece. So when I say hard edge, this is what I mean. I don't wanna come in and fog to where I have a very hard line. I want my edges to be very soft. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna soften this out a little bit so that that won't bleed through. All right, do the rest of my edges. And like I said, the reason I'm doing this is because when you pour, the thinnest part of your epoxy is going to be on the edges. And as your epoxy flows over, that's where the line of your base color could sometimes show through if you don't mix your base tint opaque enough. So I really wanted that turquoise to kind of be a peekaboo color. Also, I've rounded over my edges with a round over router bit so that now I don't have 90 degree angles. As my epoxy gets to the edge, instead of pooling up and causing a lip, which is like surface tension, it's gonna, gonna just flow over and make a nice pretty edge. All right, so I've mixed up in the cups my different colors. Now what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take my white and I'm gonna kinda just lay it down very random. Now guys, this is a super fast finish because it's my birthday. I don't have time to do some complicated finish. So this is for the, those of you that wanna get a really fun finish very quickly, very easily, and not have to sit there and think about it a lot. So I've laid down my white. Now I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna almost skip trial it. I'm leaving voids so that I have dry spots on my board. I'm not trying to get 100% coverage, okay? I want there to be voids. And the reason I do this is because when I come down with my other colors, it's gonna help them not meld together as quickly. All right, so now I'm gonna come in here. I believe this is the mint color. Yeah, this is mint. And it really doesn't matter how you lay them down. I'm just kind of coming back to where those voids are. And you can get them on top of the white. It's not gonna hurt. All right, and then I'm gonna come in with my spearmint. And it's the same thing. Now these two colors just next to each other is a beautiful finish. And like I said, you can go over that white. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my hand 
and I'm very carefully just barely melding those colors together. I don't want to blend them. I want definite separation. I have a little bit more area of white, kind of what I'm going for. Rub in my edges. Guys, if you've never used any of the Artist Till Death colorants, they absolutely blend like butter in your epoxy. So easy to work with and colors that you would not even believe. All right, I really like the white streaks. Now I'm just kind of making sure that I have no surface tension and that my piece, the board is fully covered. All right, I'm gonna heat it up just a little bit. Now I'm gonna come in with a little bit of diamond dust, just a little bit. And I'm just gonna drizzle it kind of just strategically. I like to have pockets of diamond dust, like big pockets of it. Almost looks like aggregates in your piece. Like that one big blob right there, I really like that. I like how it looks like it's just a natural piece of the stone but then also, if you come in very lightly, you can get little, oops, little strings. So you see how I dropped that one little blob so it doesn't look like a tadpole. I kind of bring that out a little bit. All right. Okay, I really like that, that's cool. Still have a little bit of surface tension right there. Okay, I don't like this blob, so I'm gonna kind of work that out with my finger. In this one little area, I'm just gonna stretch it just a bit. All right. I really like that. So now I'm gonna heat it up a little bit. Now, if you're doing this in place on an existing piece of uh, furniture or a countertop that you can't move, then I'm gonna tell you guys to get out your heat gun and you can really move it and create some really pretty effects. I'm gonna heat it up with my torch and I'm gonna kind of very slightly uh, tilt it. Now I have done really large countertops like this and if you have a couple of people, you could still tilt and get the same effect. However, if I know for a fact that I cannot tilt my piece that I'm going to be ultimately doing, then I make sure I don't create and I don't tilt my sample board. So another thing I like about this finish is the colors that I chose today are a very matte finish. They're not a metallic. The only metallic that's in this piece is my diamond dust. So that really makes the diamond dust pop against that matte finish. All right, so I'm gonna tilt it just a little bit. I don't wanna tilt a lot. I don't wanna meld it too much. All I'm really doing is getting the movement and softening my pattern just a little bit. Now I don't want to tilt it too fast. If I heat it up too much and I tilt it too fast, I have a tendency to get these little fingers that want to roll. So I want to make sure that I heat it just a little bit and even can heat certain areas that I want to move at one time. And I tilt it pretty slow. So I heated this area up here. So now when I, when I tilt, that area is gonna move because I really don't want the whole thing to move. I like a lot of the pattern that's there. Okay, so I really like this. Now I'm gonna come in for the ultimate highlights. I've mixed up some stone coat countertop, copper, metallic, powder and now I'm just going to kind of come over here and put a bunch of fractures and as this thing starts to meld and move and soften those lines are going to create really cool little highlights fracture lines 
fault lines, pretty lines. How about that? Okay, so I wanna go straight. I don't wanna create wiggly lines. I want straight lines. Now, let me show you guys a hint. When I'm dragging my epoxy across my finish, I'm not turning my stick like this. I'm turning it like this. That way I get a more fluid flow of epoxy off of my stick and I don't get blobs dropping. So I'm gonna start off my board and then I'm gonna go straight across. If you do get little drops, that's okay because this is gonna move. Now I'm really going overboard with this copper because I really like that look. Now I have a little drip here, so I'm gonna actually come back over that and follow that line there. So I think I'm gonna kind of branch off on this one too. I want this one to be a little bit bigger. I want this line right here to be pretty distinct. So I'm gonna come this way and then I'm gonna catch that line and I'm gonna follow it out there. I want some of these lines to be pretty distinct and some of them to be very, very faint. All right, I think I like that. All right, so now I'm gonna come in with some copper alcohol. This is 91% isopropyl alcohol mixed with about a quarter of uh, mica powder. This happens to be copper mica powder. And if you can't find isopropyl alcohol, I know it's really hard right now, you can also substitute the alcohol, uh, the isopropyl alcohol with Everclear that you get at the liquor store. So that always makes for a fun finish too. All right, so I've got my spray bottle and I wanted to spray a pretty fine mist. Shake it up. And I'm gonna come up high and I'm just gonna mist my piece from up high. Now I love how it causes some really neat designs with these lines that I just created. Plus it's causing me some really neat effects on the, uh, the, the turquoise. So I'm gonna let that sit for just a little bit cause I am gonna hit it again with alcohol, but I'm gonna let this dissipate move a little bit and decide where I want to hit it again. Okay, so I decided I had some epoxy left. So I'm gonna add some of the uh, mint color. So I'm actually gonna come in here and I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of the mint as well, because I want some of those fracture lines to be a different color. And because my epoxy is still flowing, these lines are really gonna get soft I think I'm gonna do the same thing with the mint. I have a little bit of mint left over. I'm sorry, this is the spearmint. Now these won't be as noticeable. They'll just add a little bit of depth into your piece. Now I'm gonna come back with white. I only have a tiny bit of white left. So I'm gonna be kind of strategic on where I place that. Oh, running out. Yep, I'm out. So I got two little lines. And that's okay. That'll look really cool when it moves. All right, I'm gonna hit it with my torch one more time. <laughs> You could even decide if you really want those lines to move and cause some really neat effects. You can kind of tilt them a little. Now I don't want to cause a lot of movement. I don't want those lines to, to turn into curves. I just kind of want them to move just enough to make them look natural. Now I'm going to come back with regular clear isopropyl and I'm going to hit them again.
Perfect. All right, very fast, very cool, very fun finish. This would look great in maybe a beach house bathroom, want those coastal colors, or a really fun, bright kitchen, maybe kitchen that has white cabinets, and then you wanna bring in a little bit of that turquoise. Wow, very pretty. like this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, crush that like button, and then also subscribe to my channel. We would love to hear your comments below. Let me know maybe what colors that you would use. You can also check out our online course at onlineepoxypro.com. All right, guys. So until next time, remember, don't be scared, move forward, and be creative.